Hi, my name is Mani Alikani. I am Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. The subject of today's discussion is continuation of the third order analysis. If you remember from the last two sessions, we talk about third order analysis in presence of a sectional round or rectangular flexible wire. Today, we are going to concentrate on the sectional wire, round or rectangular, but rigid. For simplicity, assume two adjacent brackets are well aligned in all dimensions, first order, second order, and third order. Under this condition, if we are putting a piece of round rigid wire, there would be no forces or moment appear in any direction. The wire will be passive. Can we add a twist inside the sectional round wire to produce a third order moment? The answer is no, we cannot twist the round wire. So round wire cannot produce third order angulation because they cannot produce couple. What happens if we add a first order or second order uh, bend in round wire? The only way that the second order band in round wire can produce a horizontal or vertical forces would be we introduce an asymmetric band inside the wire. However, even if you add an asymmetrical V band in first order or second order sectional round wire, the round wire can rotate in this space. Due to this rotation, the forces and moment that appear are not stable and can change direction constantly. Therefore, sectional round wire are not a good tool to introduce any first, second order, or third order view, change in the angulation of the tool. This is not correct if you are using a continuous arch wire. Under those conditions, because the round wire will not rotate, the forces that appear in the system are stable. Depends on the distance between line of action of the force and the center of resistance, the moments appear in the space that can change the third order angulation of the teeth. Remember, with the round wire, the adjacent teeth can rotate independent of each other. They don't affect each other. This is not true if you are using a rectangular wire. If you are using a section of rectangular wire between two well-aligned adjacent brackets, the wire will sit passive. If we introducing a twist in this wire, both adjacent brackets will receive equal and opposite moment. Regardless of magnitude of the twist, the moment on adjacent teeth will always be equal and opposite. This is important clinically because most of the time when we are focusing on our target, we forget that while we are inducing a torque on that tooth, the adjacent teeth will receive opposite moment. Now, what happens if we do not have a twist inside the wire, but we have a second order or first order bent inside the wire? For sake of argument, let's select a second order band, a V band. If the V band is in the center, there would be no vertical forces in the system. Therefore, we do not expect any change in the third order view. On the other hand, if we have an asymmetrical V band, a vertical forces appears in the system that are applied to adjacent teeth. Depends on the line of action of the force and the distance from the center of resistance of each one of the tooth, the amount of the moments that appears on each tooth would be different. However, because rectangular wire is rigidly connected to adjacent teeth, each one of the tooth cannot move without affecting the adjacent tooth. Under this condition, if the distance between the center of resistance and line of action of each tooth is equal, in this example, D1 is equal to D2, the magnitude of the moment that appear in the system would be equal and opposite. Therefore, the resistance that each tooth receives from adjacent teeth would be equal and opposite. Under this condition, there would be no change in the third order view or angulation of the teeth. But what happens if the line of action of a force is farther from the center of resistance in one tooth than the other? In another word, D1 and D2 are not equal. Under this condition, the moment that is applied on one tooth is larger than the moment on the adjacent tooth. On these conditions, you will see the moments that is larger will override the moment that is smaller 
and both tooth will receive a similar movement but a small and move in the same direction. I hope you enjoy uh, this session of the CTOR channel. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe and please don't forget to press the like button. Thank you.